So hi, my name is Joe Brewer, and this is my video recording for the Gifted Citizen uh, Fellowship uh, application. And I'm wanting to give you just a brief introduction to what I mean by culture design and the need for creating a globally focused research foundation to guide the formation of a science of intentional social change. So in, in really simple terms, think of it this way, that there is a convergence of crises in the world. There are many things happening to our communities at all scales as we're going through a cascade of disruptions in the world. And at the same time, there's this massive body of knowledge, skills, solutions, and insights that are out there in the world, but they're not properly combined and communicated in a way that people can take them and apply them to the process of social change. So right now, there is a desperate need for humanity to collectively get its act together to deal with the planetary crisis of global warming, wealth inequality, uh, political corruption, uh, massive poverty, starvation, etc. The planetary scale, the more local scale, we have things like um, you know, high school dropout rates, massive addi addiction and suicide, depression, um, people that are going on pathways to radicalization and extremism due to a variety of social factors. And what's interesting is when we step back and ask what is known about each of these problems, we start to discover that in the cognitive and behavioral sciences, in prevention science, in public health research, in evolutionary studies, uh, in various places, the solutions already exist, but they're not being brought together and applied. Similarly, when we look at the social change practices, we see that there is scenario planning, there are different management tools that exist, different ways of facilitating groups to achieve desired goals. And there we see that there are all of these tried and true programs, techniques, practices, models, solutions, but they're not being brought together in a strategic manner to guide the process of social change. So what I'm proposing to do is to create a research foundation that does three things. The first thing that it'll do is it will coordinate integrative research agendas for design research and action research for applied solutions. And these will bring together the research community to synthesize knowledge and apply it to social change with practitioners in the communities working on social change and also set up cultural monitoring and tracking processes for those social change practitioners to have researchers studying the culture as it's changing and giving feedback to help them understand what's working and what's not. And the second thing that this research foundation will do is it will set up a massive open access database so anyone doing social change work will be able to have the monitoring and analysis that's done, the data that's gathered, be put into a common database so that best practices can be created from uh, looking at uh, across a wide diversity of projects that will grow and populate the ecosystem of this community over time. And the third thing that this uh, project will do is it will um, create a series of culture design labs, which is a small number of focused projects that will become case studies for the design science of intentional social change over the next three years. And then these uh, case studies will become demonstrative of what is possible when we take an integrative approach to creating a design science for social change. Now, why is this so essential now? I think that the answer to that is fairly obvious, but I'll step out and give a big picture point of view for how I see this change happening. So first of all, we have this convergence of crises in the world that threaten the viability of our civilization. We literally could collapse our planetary civilization in the next few decades. So now let's kind of go forward in time and say, what would happen, uh, what needs to happen in the year 2050 for us to avoid systemic collapse? Well, basically, in 2050, we would need to have in place uh, all infrastructure in the built environment and all of our social practices built about around biomimicry principles and regenerative design. Basically, we have to undo all of the damage we do between now and then and then be sure that we're operating in harmony with nature from then forward. But to have all of that happening by 2050, let's use a signature number here, which is that many of our large-scale infrastructure projects take 20 years to build. So that means that for us to have gotten to 100% biomimicry and regenerative design in 2050, by 2030, we have to be sure that everyone graduating from universities with advanced degrees 
and professional master's programs and PhDs are being trained in regenerative design and biomimicry in whatever field that they're in. Well, for us to have that happen in universities by 2030, that means that by around 2020, we have to establish a core set of practices and demonstration sites that become case studies for best practices to emerge and to propagate across our universities and professional domains throughout the 2020s. So what that tells us is that between now and the middle of 2016 and around 2020, we need to create this series of, of case studies and demonstration projects so that they can propagate across our educational systems throughout the next couple of decades so that by the middle of the century, we are guiding and in, in increasingly shaping our planetary civilization in ways that are in harmony with the planet. And this is something that might seem grandiose and ambitious and unrealistic, but I would argue exactly the opposite that there are mountains and mountains of scientific knowledge and literally hundreds of fields showing us that only this scale of an effort is going to be sufficient to deal with the scale of the problems that we have to tackle as the 7.4 billion of us alive on the planet today. So the small part that I'm wanting to do and that I'm applying for this fellowship for is to demonstrate that a design science of like this is possible, that all the pieces exist, and that we can bring them together organizationally in the next three to five years. And I'll close with one statistic that is um, demonstrative for me, makes me feel this is really doable. Now, if we were to ask the question, um, what percentage of, a sci of the world's scientists live today, and someone has done this, actually, so you can Google it, 90% of all scientists who have ever lived are alive right now. And this is the cumulative result of population explosion plus the explosion of literacy and education around the world. So we are now generating more scientific knowledge in a 12-month period than we did in the first 300 years of science. So the scale of knowledge that is available to us is immense and huge and deeply inspiring. What we're lacking is the active curation and synthesis and application of all of this knowledge to tackle our problems in real time. And so what I'm setting out to do is create a foundational, globally focused organization that will begin the process of demonstrating this for the rest of humanity. So I would love for us to go on this journey together. Uh, let's join forces and let's change the world. Thank you.